January 6th, 2021. Not the epiphany of Jesus. No, let's not talk about that. We need to memorialize an event that wasn't an insurrection, but we have to pretend like it is because we need to seize ultimate power. That's what the Democrats are thinking. So, hey, the president, the vice president, the propagandist in chief under the current regime, they came out and they gave their two speeches today to memorialize January 6th. So we're going to bust a bunch of lies through it. So throughout this episode, we're going to break it down. Let's get right into it. Dates that occupy not only a place on our calendars, but a place in our collective memory. December 7th, 1941. Japanese destroyed or damaged nearly 20 American naval vessels, including eight battleships and more than 340 airplanes. Over 2,400 Americans died in the attack, and many more were wounded. September 11th, 2001. January 6th, 2021. Now call me crazy, but January 6th, the selfie insurrection, you're putting that in with the attacks on Pearl Harbor and 9-11 where we almost lost 3,000 Americans again? What is going on with this administration? On January 6th, we all saw what our nation would look like if the forces who seek to dismantle our democracy are successful. Is she talking about the summer of love? The lawlessness, the violence, the chaos. I think Kami Harris was a little bit uh, confusing the events a little bit because we went through a full year of chaos, lawlessness, violence, looting in Detroit, Philadelphia, Portland, Chicago, New York, Seattle, Los Angeles, Salt Lake City, Atlanta, Minneapolis, all across the nation. They were looting, hooting, and hollering, stealing, grabbing, and Mostly peaceful protesting with napalm. But then you have a, a, a bunch of people that went into the, the Capitol, took a bunch of selfies, and then a lot of people were just like, oh, man, I'm here for the ride. This is kind of interesting. And they want to spin it like this. What? I mean, don't get me wrong here. Some people really wanted to, you know, blood on their hands. And, and I think it's, I mean, if they're fighting for their nation, I see where they're coming from, and I'm, I'm a sympathizer when it comes to true patriotism, but I think there's a point in every person's life where you have to get to a point to where you say, is this the moment that I need to, you know, fight for this country like that? And I don't think that was it. And I think a lot of Americans didn't think that was it. That's why we make fun of the selfie insurrection as much as we do. But then we also make fun of the the left for manipulating it to thinking it was something bigger than it was. Because when the American people unite, which we will one day, when we fight against the government, the government's going to know. You're not going to be able to play these charades anymore. If we do not defend it, democracy simply will not stand. Kami, I heed your advice. Let's be clear. We must pass. So here comes the hook. Voting rights bills that are now before the Senate. There's the hook, everybody. So the propagandists are speaking. They want you to feel, you know, our tone is serious. We really want you to remember how dangerous this was. Do not question what happened prior to this, like the actual looting and hooting and hollering that was going on in the nation. But I want you to focus on how serious this selfie insurrection was. That's enough out of your future president there. I I just had to bring her little speech in because she compared it to (laughs) two of the most jaw-dropping aspects in American history where two, uh, Pearl Harbor was the start of World War II against the Japanese when they attacked us, and then 9-11 was the <laughs> Dick Cheney and the neocons 20-year war that we just surrendered with the, with the current regime. Two events that started two different wars, and then you have the selfie insurrection, which didn't change anything except the fact that the Democrats put up the DCMZ, the District of Columbia Militarized Zone, and shut off our whole entire... Congress, Senate, and the executive branch to the American people, even though we're the ones who fund that whole entire crap show right now. So that's enough of Kami Harris. Let's go straight into the president. Watch this. Madam Vice President. Yes? Fellow Americans. <laughs> Duped you. Get on out of here. She thought he was catcalling One her. One year ago today, in this sacred place, democracy was attacked. <clears throat> he's about to go after the supporters of Donald Trump. And it's not even just the supporters of Donald Trump. I hate how they say, oh, you're a Trump supporter. Most supporters of the 
last presidential administration could care less about Donald Trump himself. They care about the policies and the fact that he was putting America first above anything else. That's what they care about. But this feckless administration and this divider in chief here wants you to believe that these were dreaded Trump supporters and they're the most evil, unvaccinated people on earth. Violent mob reached the Capitol, but they failed. They failed. They didn't fail because there wasn't an insurrection. And if you're looking on the screen, there's an MSN article. FBI confirms there was no insurrection on January 6th. But he's here to push the big dupe, to push the big lie that there was an insurrection, that our republic was at the gravest danger it's ever been because, one, they need to keep you in fear, and, two, they have to continue to push the useful idiots into joining movements based on their emotions and not their intellect. The American people will never turn down from a good fight, and that doesn't mean that they won't fight their own government. What else do you see? A mob breaking windows, kicking in doors, breaching the Capitol, American flags on poles being used as weapons, as spears, fire stingers being thrown at the heads of police officers, a crowd that professes their love for law enforcement assaulted. Those police officers. You know, that's wrong. You don't want to beat up the police that are trying to protect. But you can't blame them for, for acting a fool the way they did because they saw the summer of love a year prior when they were whomping and rolling and beating the crap out of police, throwing rocks at them. So I think uh, the ones that you guys championed has caused the negative effects that happened on this terrible day that the democracy was under attack. This was an armed insurrection. Armed insurrection. Here's a clip from Jill Sanborn, the assistant director of the FBI's counterterrorism division. A couple months after the insurrection, she briefed Capitol Hill and gave testimony. This is what she said. How many firearms were uh, confiscated uh, in the Capitol or, or on Capitol grounds during that day? To my knowledge, we have not recovered any on that day from any other arrests at the scene at this point. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Another lie coming from the propagandist in chief. My fellow Americans, in life there's truth. And tragically, there are lies, lies conceived and spread for profit and power. We must be absolutely clear about what is true and what is a lie. And here's the truth. So lying for profit and power. Now, we have to be the ones that can delineate the facts from fiction, from false information, from misinformation, or the fact that we need to go out and get our own damn information to make our own decisions. What I see for lying for profit and power is the fact that we are coming up on the two-year anniversary of the two-week lockdown and the greatest transformation of the military-industrial complex to now the healthcare-industrial complex, where you have big government, big pharma, and big healthcare furthering the big dupe to mint new billionaires on the daily. That's where the big lie for profit's coming in. So now the fear mongering is done and we're skipping into now we're going to go into the election process and he needs to get all drummed up and get you angry. And this is what he says. The big lie being told by the former president and many Republicans who fear his wrath. This is good. Is that the insurrection in this country actually took place on election day. <laughs> November 3rd. 3rd yeah, it did. 2020. Yep. Think about that. Yeah, think about it. Is that what you thought? Yeah. Is that what you thought when you voted that day? Yeah, kind of. Taking part in an insurrection? Is that what you thought you were doing? No, what I thought I was doing was voting for the next presidential candidate. And then I, I was looking at all the results, and I like to stay up. I'm on the left coast here. So I stay up and I watch the results and come in from Pennsylvania. But what I remember seeing was... Donald Trump had a 600,000 vote lead in Pennsylvania. It was like 1 a.m. or something on the East Coast. And all of a sudden, it shot up out of nowhere. And then Pennsylvania gets declared for Donald Trump. I think that was a little sketch McGitch, or just very lucky on your part. Former presidential supporters are trying to rewrite history. They want you to see Election Day as the day of insurrection. Here's the truth. The election of 2020 was the greatest demonstration of democracy in the history of this country. More of you voted in that election than have ever voted in all of American history. That statement right there blows this whole entire thing out of the water. Why the heck? Are you pushing voting rights all of a sudden when you just claim the most people in the history of the United States ever voted? I would say our election system is actually pretty good. Why have a federal takeover of the election process if the most people voted in history? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. Because they put in all these 
policies during COVID that people could just automatically sign up. They could get this ballot. They can get that ballot. No ID, no nothing. And just bring it on in. We'll send you up. You could even vote a couple days after if you wanted to. And they want to solidify that so they can continue to push you know, fraudulence is going to happen. There's a lot of dead people that voted. That's why Bob Dole cracks a joke and his eulogy called out the Democrats. His daughter gives a eulogy at his funeral and she says, And to see, like others who have gone before me, if I will still be able to vote in Chicago. Bob Dole knew the corruption that was going on and and he died a year, almost a year after this election. And so the Democrats are trying to push this voting rights bill because they're trying to solidify the fraudulent practices that they've had. Right now, in state after state, new laws are being written. Not to protect the vote, but to deny it. That's a giant lie. All these policies that are enacting right now is to strengthen the election because due to coronavirus and the great big dupe and the manipulation machine that comes from this regime, they have weakened the voting aspects because of the manipulation of COVID. The truth is that no election, no election in American history has been more closely scrutinized or more carefully counted. Psych! I remember Bush versus Gore, where people went berserk, especially on the left. That was when I first dived into politics, and I really started understanding what was going on, because under the Bush presidency, that's when the neoconservatives were coming, and Dick Cheney was leading the military-industrial complex. And at the time, I was listening to conservative talk radio, and they were crushing that administration because of the anti-American type uh, in, intrusive policies that were coming out from the warmongers. And that's when I decided that, oh, my goodness, I think I like this ideology of constitutional conservatism. And that's where I went. So besides the point, Bush versus Gore, that recount went all the way to the Supreme Court. And every single one of these cases that they were challenged with Donald Trump, they went to these district courts and these district courts were just denying them based on merit, not based on facts or anything like that. And the Supreme Court didn't even see any of these challenges. So I would say that's another lie. From China, Russia, and beyond, they're betting that democracy's days are numbered. They've actually told me democracy is too slow, too bogged down by division to succeed in today's rapidly changing, complicated world. And they're betting they're betting America will become more like them and less like us. They're betting. They're already seeing it's happening because you schmucks are keeping this big dupe with the coronavirus and authoritarianism. They understand that they, you guys are reflecting exactly what they do to their people. So when they're telling you, and first of all, why would any of these, pre, why would these people be telling, talking to the president of the United States like this if they weren't planting those seeds of authoritarianism and they weren't just wiping the floor with this paper tiger? That's what's happening. Democracy is a, there is a threat against the end democracy, and it's the people that are in power right now. They may have good intentions, but they're in, I don't even think they have good intentions, unless they're that naive to the fact that what they're doing goes against every single value and aspect of freedom. I don't believe it. China and Russia are calling you out because they see what's happening with the policies with COVID, and they also see what's happening with the redistribution of the American people's wealth through all this crazy spending that your administration did in 12 months. And now we're coming into the final bits of this propaganda speech, and it's busted lie number whatever. Another busted lie here. He's going to go into the fact that he's talking about how the police officers were killed in the line of duty. And I want to show you, I'm going to, we'll play it, and then I'm going to show you exactly the part that's been manipulated so you don't understand the true facts. In the wake of January 6th, wants to honor Officer Brian Sicknick, who lost his life the day after the attack, and a second time to honor Officer Billy Evans, who lost his life defending this capital as well. So he talked about two police officers that didn't die on the day of the insurrection, the selfie insurrection. But he mentions Billy Evans, and Billy Evans, he did die because the Capitol was attacked to him months later in April when a Nation of Islam follower and Louis Farrakhan follower, but he rammed the gate of the Capitol and tried stabbing police officers in the mainstream media and this administration silenced it so quick because they don't want people to know that terrorism is still a major threat. My God bless those who stand watch over democracy. 
Well, thank you, Joe. I am blessed and continue to ask for God's blessings because I will defend this nation till the day that I die. And I hope every single one of you remembers this. Always stand up for liberty. Don't be afraid to challenge the narrative. Don't fall for what this propagandist in chief is doing. Don't fall for what the Democrats are doing against you. Question everything. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Nino G Show. I'll catch you on the next one.